Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining us for our first episode of our new podcast series that's part of our rebranded collective New Music Mosaic. Today we are joined by composer Carolyn Borcharding. Hi, Carolyn. How are you doing? Hey, doing good. How about you? I'm doing great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just keeping busy. Yeah. Uh, how's the DMA going? It's, I think it's going pretty well at this point. Uh, I'm out of the coursework stage, so I'm just nice. just doing the dissertation and sort of the TA teaching stuff. So it's kind of a weird feeling being at the tail end of the of the doctorate. So yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. I don't know what that feels like, but maybe someday I will. <laughs> Yeah. So, so preparing for this, I was listening to a bunch of your music last night, and I one of the first pieces that I listened to was "That's the Way the Cookie Crumbles," and I was listening to Wilson's performance on saxophone and Drew's on guitar, and how they're pretty different. How Drew's version is much more relaxed in a way, atmospheric. Then Wilson's, uh, to me at least, was more anxious and rhythmic driven and just interesting to see how vastly different these were. And this was your first experience writing a piece like this that's giving a lot of freedom to the to the performer, right? Yeah, yeah, there is no score at all. Like there's, some in, there's some instructions in the super collided code, you know, but otherwise they all the aural material is up to the performers so awesome yeah and and so you as a performer uh, that i know you've also done some improv stuff how how do you prepare something like this is there do you prepare a certain structure or licks like a jazz musician would um how do you approach something like this how do you learn a piece like this yeah so for this piece specifically, I mean, part of this piece was a sort of reaction against and, and a frustration with what I was dealing with in like scored notation and the idea that I was I was really latched on to controlling every parameter of sound and I really wanted to let go of that um, because it lets the performers kind of speak for themselves and have a bit more agency in the piece. So, um, I actually worked with Wilson on this one to start uh, for his doctoral project actually. And um, so my idea with this piece was one, to just toss the score out completely. Um, And he sent me some of his improv style licks. So I kind of had those in my ear while I was combining and making these effects in Super Collider. And that was sort of a general idea for how I conceived that the piece would sound like, saying like, okay, well, if he plays this lick through through this sort of effect, I'm gonna get this like cloud of of crazy of crazy sounds. Um, And so I I wrote a lot of the electronics to kind of pair well with that. And then I also wrote some that would be a little bit like counterintuitive to those so there's like certain sounds that'll record and come back later and so there's a a, basically a wide variety of options so that any performer that comes to the piece they can kind of make it their own Um, and that's what that was what was so exciting when Drew played it because then it was like totally different I was like okay awesome it's not it's not totally driven by the electronic effects it's really driven by what the performers want to do so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah interesting and so in your electronics is there a form so did you think about a structure uh i did generally so i have like certain effects that open the piece sort of like in a really sort of sparse manner and then there's a general sort of growth that happens a lot more layers that eventually come in and then again, it like cuts out and sort of fades and some of the sparse stuff at the beginning comes back at the end. So a little bit of that, that form, um, but the performers, they can also, they can click through each effect as fast as they want. So they could do whatever they want really with the form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. And 
I guess I've been taking a historical performance practice class and seeing how in the Baroque period, there was also a lot of liberty on the performer's side. Maybe not as much as, as your piece, but definitely with embellishments and ornamentations. And it's interesting how that um, kind of makes a comeback in a way, at least yeah. in the classical world. And, and so, so this was your first piece writing something like this. Is this, do you feel like this has informed any of the other music that you've written since then? I don't know if a piece like Stay that you wrote for Speaking Pianist, uh, some live and fixed electronic sounds and video. Um, if that one, um, I don't know the time frame of when you wrote it, but did that inspire you to try something different in a fixed notation piece? Yes. And I'm trying to formulate how those two were connected because I was kind of putting them both together at the same time. And I know with the pianist's choreography in Stay, I wanted that to be a bit more, um, a bit freer in time, a bit freer with what they do. So there's a lot, like, there's some, uh, directions that the performer should like, you know, look at their hands. And then I kind of give a bit more of like a poetic kind of a prompt, you know, as if someone is, as if you're thinking about someone as if someone has been lost or something like that. So it's going to be similar kind of from performer to performer, but still the execution, the way they interpret those directions is gonna be, you know, could be vastly different. Um, and so I was thinking, I think, I think that was a lot of it was trying to consider, you know, really what the performer brings to the piece and how I can write it in such a way that they, they have that sort of, again, that agency to sort of like bring what they want to interpret it in a way um, so that each performance is a bit different at least. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's pretty cool. And it, relates to something I've been thinking about when you write you write a piece in a way it has a life of its own now um, I haven't had a lot of second performances of my music but I've been having a reed quintet being read by this um, reed quintet at Penn State and seeing how they they think about things differently about uh, this piece for a second performance and how we as composers lose some of that control once that piece is out and how I think that's that's great how yeah it's definitely on the performer now to interpret it um, yeah um, it's a scary thing too you know when sometimes that piece is out there and you're like well I have ideas on how I want it to sound and I and I hope that they kind of adhere to the sound of the piece, you know, but also I want them to feel free to add, you know, their interpretation. But yeah. I don't want them to butcher it either. <laughs> <You know? Right. laughs> yeah, that's, that's interesting. And and for a piece like, like Stay, um, you wrote some, some live and some fixed electronic sounds, some that are triggered. Um, how much of everything that's going on, a pianist, electronics, and a video, how much of that is, how do you line it up? So it's mostly lined up through, through tempo. Um, as long as the performer stays pretty close, to the tempo then, um, as long as they're then triggering things as it's notated in the score, at the same, at the tempo that the piece has been written, things will line up and and flow um, yeah. as they as they should in a way. So there won't be any large gaps or any, any like weird sudden layers of multiple cues, um, but at the same time, it gives them the ability to I stretch a gesture for just a little bit longer or, or have a little bit more rubato on, on a gesture or something like that. So, and it's, it's not so much, there's no like sense of like very, very fixed media click track sort of stuff. I, I yeah, the, 
the queue based sort of system I find is kind of the best of, of both worlds when trying to line up so many different media. Yeah. Did you make your own video? I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. How did you make that? It's super cool. Yeah, it's all so it was all put together in uh, After Effects um, using uh, I think I used a lot of shot film as the sort of shot video as the basis. Um, so there's all, all those hands. Those are my hands moving and oh. frame by frame <laughs> drawing over them. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. It was my pandemic project. So, you know, I could kind of turn some music on, ignore what was happening, you know, with the with the pandemic and just draw hands for hours. <laughs> That's awesome though. Yeah. And you're not only a composer, but a performer and animator. And you're also a photographer, I know. You like to do photography. Yeah. Has that ever inspired your music in any way i think it has inspired a frame of mind um one of a very very recent piece that has not even hasn't even gotten a performance yet um this very it's a very meditative like vibraphone and electronics piece um it kind of came out of that same i same sort of mindset. So whenever I go out and take photos, it's very much just a, a really, it's a really relaxing thing for me to, to do, just to kind of like focus on what it is that I'm looking at and how the shot's gonna go. It can be frustrating though, if like it's a partly sunny day and the clouds keep like coming over the sun and the light keeps changing. And, um, but it's, there's this sense of a, like a Zen sort of mindset in a way that's just kind of like getting out of what is happening around me and just sort of focusing on, you know, this like, oftentimes this very small thing that I'm trying to photograph. And I usually come back from like a, a photo walk and I'm just like, ah, oh, I just feel so much better just taking this time to like, pause and look around and see things that I wouldn't see normally. Um, it's like when I have a camera in my hand, suddenly I'm looking at, at the world differently. Um, and that's kind of how I approached the, the vibraphone piece. It's like, I, I just kind of wanted it to be this space where we could like take a break and just like listen and like let these harmonies and wash over, wash, wash over your ears in a way, so. Yeah, super interesting about uh, photography and I think f photo walks. I, I like what you call them. Um, a lot of fun. I realized I hadn't done that since I got here in August for a while. And two weeks ago, I just decided it was really cold. But and because it was the first day that it was as cold as it was, I didn't bring a sweater. I was like, I'm just going to go. And halfway through this, like, Sunday night, like, oh, it's really cold. I should have planned better. But it was just a lot of fun. It's so relaxing to do that. Yeah. Um, and I had one last question for you. I've filling out applications for composition, fellowships, competitions, and things. I've realized a lot of times they ask you to talk about composition and what got you into it and why are you doing uh what, what you're doing. And I realized part of the composition, I guess, journey or process that I really like is the collaboration side of things. Once I've written the piece, even better when I've written with a friend, written it with a friend, like you were describing with mm -hmm. talking with Wilson, written a piece with a friend and then they work on it and then the premiere happens. Um, but, and maybe that's what's gotten me into conducting a little bit, is I, I tend to be a very slow composer. <laughs> so that means I don't experience the collaboration side of things that often, or at least not often enough for me. And I realize with conducting, I get to do that every week or twice a week or whatever. Um, 
and I realized that's what I've really enjoyed about composition. Of course, the whole process is enjoyable, but um, if I had to say a specific spot, it's probably that. I don't know if you feel the same way or if there's another spot, if it's more introspective. I know you've done some solely electronic stuff, which I think for me has been tricky um, just because I've realized I don't have the collaboration side because you're just working with yourself a lot of the times, but I feel like you've found a happy medium um, between electronics and live performers working together. Yeah, yeah, I like the that collaborative side of things for sure. Um, it's actually funny that you mentioned like filling out these applications for fellowships and things and I have a little a little bit of an issue sometimes doing those because it's so much like, well, if, big if, if I get it, I'm just going to write a piece for this ensemble and then they're going to play it and that's it. And I'm like, I, you know, it's that back and forth with a performer that I find is, is really fun. And that's where I learn a lot too, where it's like, Hey, is this possible? And then they might be like, no, not at all. <laughs> I'd be like, okay. Um, yeah. And I like, I really like working with friends and colleagues especially because a lot, 99% of the time, they're in the same space that we are as, as composers, as students, you know, because we're all like roughly at a certain space, like in school, we're, we're starting to get out into the world, we're starting to think about being these professionals and how we're going to represent ourselves. And I feel like that by collaborating with you know, my friends and colleagues like this, it's like, okay, this is how we can help each other make it in the world, make it in the composition, music world, music world more broadly. <laughs> um, whereas sure writing for this famous ensemble is like great, but it's really only great for me. Like this other ensemble is fine. They don't, they don't need me. <laughs> they don't need my work. Um, so it feels kind of weird in a way. Um, yeah, collaborative is definitely like one of those things I enjoy about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it's really important to work with people that are in your situation um, and just starting up. Um, well, anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks and, for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful talking to you and listeners. Thank you also for joining us and stay tuned for our next podcast and especially our next concerts coming up this Saturday and next Saturday. Two concerts, two weeks, weekends. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. <laughs>